All right, guys, so I'm back. It's only about 10 minutes ago since I, uh, you know, finished that first video, but uh, I guess something came to mind when I was standing there. I was standing there on that beach for, oh, I don't know, half an hour drinking a beer. <clears throat> Not sure if you can do that here at State Parks in Illinois, but, oh, oh well, oh, whatever. But, um, and I was sitting down there, and I was just thinking, you know, what the hell am I doing? <clears throat> What am I doing here, <laughs> right? Why am I deciding to, you know, sleep in a van? This is crazy. Or sleep in a uh, in my car tonight. This is crazy. And most of the folks in the Serval Society, the first realm, would think sleeping in a van is crazy. Why don't you have a hundred fifty thousand dollar house with a mortgage, a thirty year mortgage, right? <clears throat> Why don't you go into uh, debt, uh, go into debt uh, to banksters? Why would you? Why, why wouldn't you do that? That's kind of a stupid question, but. Well, why wouldn't you do that? <clears throat> but I don't know, being down there on that beach really... I don't know. I I think the first realm, the state of survival society, has more of a hold on people than... <clears throat> than we really realize. I, or I guess, you know, I'll speak for myself. Um, it's only been 25 years, but that's a long time. It really is. Reminds me of um, in that last episode of the Bonnie podcast that Jason Booth and I recorded. <clears throat> there was a, a quote in a documentary that said, um, hopefully water doesn't fall on my screen. But this guy uh, decided to move out in his van, and uh, he said it took him about three weeks to decompress. I don't doubt it at all. I don't doubt it at all. I really do imagine the first, uh, especially the first month, first couple months, it's probably got to be real hard. To withdraw from the states of all society, no matter how much you want to do it, it's just foreign to most of our natures, most of ours, most of our natures. So, I don't know. It's an evil institution. It's a, uh, a really, really terrible culture. And it's definitely not one of uh, individual freedom. It's one of uh, collectivist slave, collectivist slavery. And that goes without saying for most of my listeners and viewers, I guess, but... <clears throat> yeah, just taking this trail back to my uh, my vehicle before it gets dark. I do not want to be... Now, if I was down uh, where, we, where I've been riding for 25 years, essentially, then uh, I wouldn't mind being out at night. Hell, we ride until 3 or 4 in the morning, sometimes all night down there, but... Uh, yeah, well, this is the first time I've been here, so I'm not about to get caught up in these woods when it gets dark. I could, I, I could manage. I, I, I definitely could, but <clears throat> you know, I'm just a. Uh, I didn't tell anyone I was doing this except for Jason, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just uh, playing it safe a little bit. Playing it safe. Well, I'm gonna go sleep in my car, but uh, whatever, whatever. The point is, where this video is. It's really hard to break free from the status of all society, no matter how much you desire to. Not only does it take a lot of effort, time, and uh, with fan nomadism, you know, not a whole lot of money, but still there's some money involved. <clears throat> not only is it that, the actual physical um, things that go into it, that's, uh, you know, might make it, might make it more difficult for folks. It's also the, the, the I guess, the mentality of the first realm, right? It's the culture of the first realm too. I mean, I've, I've heard too many stories about uh, van nomads who have, uh, you know, woken up with uh, their windshield smashed because someone didn't like the way they were living. And I think there's a lot of jealousy with that. Uh, people taking the initiative and finding their own freedom uh, when someone else is enslaved and they know it. So <clears throat> there's definitely a lot of cultural pull um, beyond just kind of the the individual basis. So not just me, but not just me physically and mentally, but also there's a lot of cultural pull that pulls people back into um, that kind of society. And it's, it's, it's mostly comf comfortability, but um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I guess that was the point of this video. I don't know how far away am I am from my van. That I guess that trail is like five miles. So it's 
really not that bad, you know, temperature wise. Got my hands out of my gloves. Hold the goddamn camera, so yeah, hands aren't cold yet, so I guess that's good. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I do work outside, so I've worked plenty of days this winter when it's been negative five or negative ten outside. So I guess it's you know 30 degrees isn't too bad. So maybe maybe I've acclimated a little bit. But uh, anyways, that's the point I wanted to get across is that uh, if you decide to pursue a lifestyle change, whether it's fan nomadism, minimal sailboating, or whatever. You're going to have a lot to overcome. You really are. I know when I tell my dad that I'm going to do this. That's, uh, you know, it's going to be, I don't know. He's going to make me feel fucking stupid. It's not going to be fun. So, <clears throat> I don't know, guys. Don't let anyone stop you from being free. This life is way too fucking short to be fucking around with violent psychopaths. Go and be free. Go and claim your freedom. Alright, that's all guys. I'll be back here momentarily.